Mark Daniel Coleman, born December 20, 1964, is a retired American mixed martial artist, professional wrestler, former NCAA collegiate wrestler and former Olympic amateur wrestler. Known as the Hammer, he was the UFC 10 and UFC 11 tournament champion, the first UFC heavyweight champion, and the Pride Fighting Championships 2000 Open Weight Grand Prix champion. At UFC 82 Coleman was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. At the age of retirement he was taking 150.000 USD salary per year. Coleman is credited with proving the ability of wrestlers to dominate in the developing sport of mixed martial arts, and with being one of the first in American MMA to successfully use the strategy that he coined ground and pound, earning him the distinction as the godfather of ground pound. Coleman was born in Fremont, Ohio, U.S. In 1964, he began freestyle wrestling as a teenager and in 1981 was the first state champion wrestler for St. Joseph Central Catholic High School, Fremont, Ohio. He continued to wrestle for Miami University, in Ohio, where he was a two-time Mid-American Conference wrestling champion. In his senior year, he transferred to the Ohio State University and won an NCAA championship. Out of college, he was awarded a spot on the U.S. wrestling team placing second 100 kilograms at the 1991 FILA Wrestling World Championships in Varna, Bulgaria, and placing seventh overall in the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. Following his amateur career, Coleman made the transition to the Thenu sport of mixed martial arts, winning his first two tournaments in dominating fashion, including a win over UFC 8 champion Don Fry at UFC 10 in 1996 and becoming the first UFC heavyweight champion after submitting UFC superfight champion Dan Severn via neck crank submission at UFC 12. Coleman made his first UFC heavyweight championship title defense at UFC 14, facing kickboxer and heavy underdog Maurice Smith. In the pre-fight interview with Joe Rogan, Coleman stated I'm going to ground him and pound the goddamn shit out of him thus coining the name ground and pound in what turned out to be a long battle. Coleman lost a decision after 2100 regulation plus two overtimes. This was considered to be one of the largest upsets in UFC history at that time, largely because of the way Coleman had dominated his opponents in his previous fights. Coleman took nearly a year off after having to get ACL surgery and returned at UFC 17. Coleman was originally scheduled to face Randy Couture in a title match for the UFC Heavyweight Championship but Couture was injured during training and was forced to pull out of the fight. Coleman instead faced a relatively unknown last-minute replacement fighter, up-and-coming Lions Den product Pete Williams. In what turned out to be another long and strenuous battle, Coleman appeared to be completely exhausted after 10 minutes he was fatigued to the point of resting his hands on his knees during the fight. Williams took advantage of Coleman's fatigue and landed a heavy kick to the face, knocking the hammer out for the first time in his career. After his loss to Pete Williams, Coleman went to train with former UFC champion Ken Shamrock and his Lion's Den training camp for his upcoming bout with feared Brazilian striker Pedro Rizzo at UFC 18. The fight with Rizzo was part of the road to the heavyweight title, which was a foreman tournament between Coleman, Rizzo, Ba Rutten and Suyoshi Kasaka that would crown the next UFC heavyweight champion. After 1500 the fight went to the judges, and they awarded a split decision win to Rizzo. This bout was a source of controversy to many, including Coleman himself, who felt that he was robbed of the decision win. In a recent interview, Coleman said he still feels the effects of the controversial decision loss to Rizzo. From 1999 through 2006, the Hammer continued his career with Japanese promotion, Pride Fighting Championships while also making appearances with the professional wrestling promotion Hustle. At Pride 5, Coleman fought Nobuhiko Takada who would become Hustle's owner and booker. Though thought to be the much better fighter, Coleman was caught by a heel hook from Takada and submitted. The validity of this fight has been questioned by many fans. In response to questions about the fight's legitimacy, Coleman said, It was what it was. I needed to support my family. They guaranteed me another fight after that and I needed that security. It was what it was. I'm going to leave it at that. Coleman won the Pride 2000 Open Weight Grand Prix Tournament defeating Masaki Satake, Akira Shoji, Kazuyuki Fujita, and Igor Vivchanchin. The Hammers training and 2000 tournament victory are depicted in the documentary The Smashing Machine The Life and Times of Extreme Fighter Mark Kerr. 
After a quick TKO victory over Alan Goes at Pride 13 collision course, Coleman faced possibly his toughest challenge ever in Antonio Rodrigo Noguera at Pride 16. Minotaro was able to catch the hammer in a triangle armbar at 610 of the first round, breaking Coleman's six fight winning streak. Coleman would take nearly two years off following the fight with Noguera, spending time with his wife and children, and focusing on developing his martial arts training facility and stable of fighters at Team Hammer House, training such notable fighters as Kevin Randleman, Wes Sims and Phil Baroni, Team Hammer House quickly gained a reputation of turning out world-class fighters. Mark Coleman returned to MMA competition at Pride 26 to face Don Fry in a rematch of their meeting at UFC 10. This proved to be a much tougher battle. Coming back from a career-threatening neck injury, Coleman ultimately won a unanimous decision victory after 20 minutes. Following the fight, Coleman apologized to the fans for the lack of action during the fight in which he had spent the majority of the time in taking down and maintaining positional dominance of Fry with his superior wrestling ability. Between training fighters and spending time with his family, the Hammer was now fighting roughly once a year. He returned to competition to take place in the Pride 2004 Heavyweight Grand Prix. As the returning Grand Prix champion in the open weight division, his first round match at Pride Total Elimination 2004 was against Pride Heavyweight Champion Fedor Emelianenko, in what turned out to be a short bout, Coleman was submitted by armbar at 211 of the first round, eliminating him from the tournament. Coleman returned to the Pride ring in February 2005, this time facing Mirko Crow Cop at Pride 29 Fists of Fire, suffering the second knockout of his career. The hammer fell to strikes by Crow Cop in the first round. In November 2005, Mark Coleman appeared in Bushido Europarotterdam Rumble, Europe's first Bushido event and choked out Milko Vorn at 05-6 of the first round. The Hammer returned to action at Pride 31 with a victory over shoot box team member Morcio Shogun Rua after the fight was stopped when Shogun suffered a dislocated elbow during a Coleman takedown. With Team Hammer house member Phil Baroni in his corner, Coleman began the match by taking Shogun to the ground. At 0-4-9 of the first round, Rua got up and as he took the first step Coleman grabbed his feet. Rua fell and broke his arm. Coleman then started peppering Rua with strikes before the referee stopped the fight. Backstage in his post-fight interview, Coleman stated that the whole melee happened in the heat of the moment and that he did not blame the shoot box team for coming in and backing their fighter. He then added that similar to shoot box, Hammer House is also like a family, and thanked Baroni for coming in and watching his back. An outraged shoot box refused to accept Coleman's backstage apology. The shoot box team was assigned a yellow card for instigating this infraction. On October 21, 2006, Mark Coleman again faced Pride heavyweight champion Fedor Emelianenko at Pride's first American show, Pride 32 The Real Deal, and lost via submission armbar at 117 of round 2. Mark Coleman appeared with teammate, Kevin Randleman, on the U.S. pay-per-view broadcast of the final Pride event, Pride 34 Kamikaze, stating that he intended to keep fighting. At UFC 82, Mark Coleman was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame, making him the fifth inductee. Coleman announced that he was not retiring and would return to the Octagon to fight Brock Lesnar on August 9 in Minneapolis at UFC 87. However, Coleman injured his knee while training, and was forced to pull out of the event. Heath Herring replaced Coleman for the fight. At UFC 109, Coleman faced fellow UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture. After originally being scheduled to meet at UFC 17 in 1998 12 years prior, in which an injury forced Couture to drop out of the fight. Coleman went on record, multiple times during the build-up for the fight, in which he claimed this was his dream bout. After being outboxed on the feet, Coleman was taken down and defeated shortly after by rear naked choke at 109 in round 2. The bout marked the first time two UFC Hall of Fame inductees had fought. Following Coleman's loss to Couture in the main event of UFC 109, his sixth loss in his last ten fights, he was released by the promotion. After going over three years without competing Coleman announced via Facebook that he has officially retired from MMA competition at 48 years of age. Coleman has two daughters. He appeared in the documentary The Smashing Machine The Life and Times of Mark Kerr alongside fellow fighter and former friend Mark Kerr. In June 2006. It was announced that Coleman was one of the new coaches in the International Fight League, but unable to assemble a team. He was replaced by Ken Shamrock.
Coleman acknowledges former UFC welterweight champion and UFC lightweight champion B. J. Penn as his idol in the sport of mixed martial arts. <laughs>